We're here wrapping it up. Thank you so much to, I always like to call him the People's TV Rep. You know what I'm saying? Because he keeps it live, he keeps it real, he keeps it on tip, man. Tell everybody your name and tell them what this event meant to you tonight, this evening now. We've been here since this morning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's been a, it's been a long day and a uh, wonderful day. My name is Fred V. Man Watson. Fred V, as in Victor Man, M A N Watson. Uh, host uh, Good News at Primetime live TV show, uh, public access, People TV, uh, Channel 24. Uh, live stream www.peopletv.org every Wednesday, every Wednesday, uh, 7 to 8 p.m. live. One of the few uh, down here that's still live. Um, direct contact numbers are 404 505 7918 and uh, email fredvman at net. I want to personally thank you because since I took that Selma trip, my life has not been the same. There's a greater awareness. Uh, I'm keen to some things that, that I wasn't keen to before, even as a broadcaster, newscaster, myself, independent of the traditional media. Uh, so I salute you and what you're creating. And if you're not a affecting anybody else, it's definitely affecting me. So I appreciate that. Give a final word to some of the causes that uh, need to be attended to by, pe by, by people, participation, and partnership as we come to a close. Oh, well, uh, again, this was Prevention Industry Day in the uh, state of Georgia uh, capital, and we really did very, very light today. Uh, we are going to do a second one uh, in either May or June. Uh, we almost canceled the one today, but we're going to, uh, I think everybody's agreeing that we're going to do it again in May or June uh, when the governor does the proclamation for Nonviolence Month, which will be sometime around May 1st, and then we'll probably do a rally uh, that week, and then we're going into uh, Victory Over Violence Month, beginning with Auburn Festival. Uh, and uh, the, uh, a couple other festivals. But at any rate, um, uh, the um, thing that people should take away with them, I think, today is that the prevention industry, and I call it industry, because of the fact that they represent so many numbers. If you look at all the people that represent service providers, whether it's dealing with domestic abuse, child abuse, whether it's dealing with uh, 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 AA, A, or... Um, uh, heart, heart Association, Lung Association, people that serve our state, so often what they don't get recognized is as an industry. Uh, when you talk about industries, you think about the oil industry, you think about the um, music industry, the beverage industry, but you think about nonprofits, you think about them, or service providers, you think of them as programs, coalitions, and organizations as not being something that should be considered or, or thought about in the halls of the Capitol. I'm wearing my tie. You see, I'm wearing a tie that says money. Things that happen to the state Capitol has to do with money. It has to do with leverage of money and, and power, and that has to do with votes. That has to do with how many people will be impacted by this decision. And so what I'm called, this call out that we do each year is to acknowledge those who are the, the make up an industry that quite often don't realize the power that they have in the halls and capitals across the nation. So here in Atlanta, uh, if there are a couple of things that, you, uh, that I would say that you also want to be uh, concerned about is the fact that you're about to lose, we're about to lose public access television here in Atlanta. Uh, that's one of the things that will occur within about eight months unless there's uh, active community engagement and involvement. Uh, that's one of the things to be concerned about. Another thing to be concerned about in here in Georgia that we talked about a little bit today is 47 percent, uh, no, not take it back, 67 percent of the young African Americans don't graduate from high school, I'll say it again, Brother Select. 67% of young African-American males don't graduate from high school. So even though the governor and they're launching the new programs to have it to where they're going to work with skilled trades, I guess who gets left out? <laughs> the, <laughs> okay. A lot of people will not be able to get back into the workforce because they have a felony. If you have a felony, you have a challenge and a problem. And that makes no difference whether you are uh, uh, 18 or 80. Uh, when you go to get into senior housing, they're going to look back and find out whether or not you have a felony or not. If you have a felony, you will lose your job, you will lose your housing because you cannot be admitted if you have a felony. So there are some, there are some things and some concerns about information, education, training, mobilization that are very important that we come together as a family, as a community, and begin to see how we change and alter the laws that are not anymore to the benefit of what they were designed to do at the time. 
so I, those are, I think, some of the key things. I, uh, let me leave one other piece with you for the young people. Parents, you want to become – we got a center over on Fulton Industrial, uh, 900 Wendell Court. First time we have a victim center here in the state. So we've been up and running for two months now. So there's a victim center that's located at 900 Wendell Court. We encourage people to come and